Meanwhile, in the House of Representatives, a similar resolution was passed, a resolution to restrain a president's power to go to war without getting Congress on board. One of only three Republicans to vote for it, remarkably, was Matt Gates of Florida, who was one of the president's closest allies, maybe his single closest ally in the House of Representatives. He joins us now. Um, Congressman, thanks so much for coming on. So I think it's fair to say you're certainly one of the people in the House closest to the president. He is completely opposed to this. You, as his close ally, voted for it. Tell us why you did that. I spoke to the president today after one of America's brave patriots was laid down at Arlington, one of my constituents who passed away just days before Christmas in Afghanistan. And the president told me he's more anti-war than I am. And I love the president for that, Tucker. The thing is, I think you got a few of the advisors of the president who are trying to slow walk the administration into war. When the president relies on his instincts and we have the Trump doctrine, we kill the terrorists and we come home. And I think this war powers resolution was worthy of support because it did not criticize the president. It did not say he was wrong in killing Soleimani, but he did, it did say that if any president wants to drag our nation into another forever Middle East war, that they require the the approval of the United States Congress. That's something I deeply believe, and I think it's something the president deeply believes. So why wouldn't, I mean, first of all, I think that the Constitution requires that. I think it's pretty obvious um, that it does. But why, why wouldn't Congress, if they're so in favor of a military action, put themselves on the record endorsing it? It seems like one of the reasons people oppose this is because they're afraid. They're cowards in the Congress. Uh, it's it's unfortunate that I think uh, we have members of Congress that are, depart from what the framers and founders believed would happen. They believed that we would closely guard our Article I powers and that we would ensure that no president would be able to take those away in, in, in any sort of affront to what was intended for uh, us to be our responsibility. It's my belief that declaring war is a non-delegable duty of the United States Congress. And it's ludicrous for any of my colleagues to suggest that we have have to not do our job so that people in uniform can do theirs. We can actually do both, Tucker. Yeah, it's a, it's just, so just be totally clear. You're one of three Republicans who voted, in effect, against the president's stated position, but you just talked to the president and he said that he's on your side. Well, the president probably would have preferred that I vote uh, with the other Republicans. He certainly said that. But I think on these broader questions of war and peace, Donald Trump understands that the pro-war candidate loses presidential elections. Hillary Clinton yeah. was more pro-war and lost. And, and if you look previously, it's typically the anti-war candidates that won. I think since 9-11, John Kerry w was the only uh, anti-war candidate that lost uh, an election. And so I think that the president understands that. And he He's too smart to let Nancy Pelosi try to cast him as the pro-war candidate. And that's why I don't think we're going to war with Iran. I think I think that's I think it's a smart analysis. Congressman, thanks so much for explaining that. I appreciate it. Thank you.